in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed He that cometh unto God must come believing that he is the rewarder. While you are fasting, you know the rewarder is watching you. While you are praying, the rewarder is watching you. Somebody says, come and bribe and become a director. And you say no. And for that reason, your children pay the price for one year. The rewarder is watching. Can I tell you? If you do not know the rewarder, compromise will look pleasant if you do not know the rewarder all these cutting corners in ministry you can stay even if it's with five people with joy i know the rewarder is watching you are training the five people as if you are preaching in a stadium mentoring them because those five people are not your members they are your leaders you are training when your leaders are trained members can now come Are we together? Yes. Development is difficult. It took Jesus 18 years to be ready for ministry. 18, 1, 8. 18 years of actively building himself. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for us to throw away premature manifestation and premature exposure and get back to the place where men are made made for their destinies are we together now the stage is not for rehearsal the stage is for manifestation if you want to rehearse go to the wilderness you will be given a chance to kill the lion don't come and stand before goliath to try trial and error will destroy you goliath is not playing games learn with the lion learn with the bear and master the art of war when you stand before goliath it is one one opportunity to bring him down listen you must master the mysteries of the presence of god you must master the mysteries of the anointing you must master the mystery of dominion. You must master the mysteries of influence. You must master the mysteries of the word of God. People will not just come and listen to you like that. Businessman, what have you read about business? Do you know the best people in your industry? Have you humbled yourself to learn from them? Or you are wallowing in the pride of saying everybody is a colleague. Run away from colleague mentality. That's what has kept many people down in this our arrogant generation. Just because great men are humble does not mean they are stupid. Know where you stand and draw the line with honor. No matter how humble our fathers are, sometimes a particular father of faith, I will not mention the name, but when we have the privilege of talking, sometimes you can say, ah, eh, you know, I'm speaking to an apostle now. And I just laugh. I say, ah, daddy, don't, don't say that. Oh, he's still your boy. And we're laughing. Most of you, as they say that kind of thing, you carry it as a compliment. That a, a pastor is speaking to an apostle. What, what, what foolish indoctrination. These are men who, their tears move heaven. And heaven will say, who is making you cry? Is someone learning? You own a school. It's time to stop clapping for yourself and sit down. How can I make it the best? How can this be the greatest? You own a business. You are in ministry. It's time to stop. You, you cannot be going up and down every, every program, every show you are there. Jumping from pillar to post and you want the anointing to work in your life? No. Samuel was called a seer. 
You didn't see him out every time, but when Samuel came out, people would know that God is about to say something because this guy has come out. Most of us have cheapened ourselves because you are everywhere doing everything. Hallelujah. When others are sleeping, you wake up in the night. Father, for the sake of my destiny, I love you, but you are a rewarder. I came from a family where no one has risen. And I heard my parents tell me that they tried. I have made up my mind that I will be that savior. Lord, for the next seven months, it is two hours with you every night. Zakos Katapragata. While you are doing that, you are in your small room. Don't worry. The rewarder is watching. The rewarder is watching. I sense in my spirit that God gave me this message because in this season, the rewarder is going to move again. Move from family to family. Move from ministry to ministry. There are some of you, hear me, you have served for a very long time and it looks like nobody has noticed you. I'm telling you prophetically, do not feel bad. I'm saying this by the spirit of the living God. The rewarder is going to have a convocation and say, I remember you paid the school fees of a young man in 2015. Nobody saw you to say thank you, but I have come as a rewarder that your children will never beg again because of what you have done. Hear me. When God wants to schedule a season of reward, the first thing he does is to put something in your hand. Exodus chapter 4. Give it to us, please. Exodus 4 and verse 2. I hope I got that right. Yes. This was the encounter. Exodus 4 and verse 2. And the Lord said unto Moses, What is that that is in your hand? There is always something in your hand that will be used to make your influence. Moses, you are about to be greatly magnified by God. That rod. And when you read the verses after he said to throw that rod on the ground, you must cast that rod and worship God with it. Until that rod is handed over to God to refine it. Now go to verse 17. Same Exodus 4 and verse 17. He said, thou shalt take this rod in your hand, wherewith thou shalt do signs. It was in your rod before, but nothing was upon it to do signs. Same rod, now with the anointing upon it, you can do signs. Same gift of singing. Sometimes I watch this, my precious people, as they worship, as they sing, and all the, the lovely people who just sang, and I'm looking at them. And you know, I keep praying that God will grant them the grace to keep building because you see, the value of the anointing is that it comes upon a prepared vessel. Let me say it again. The value of the anointing is that it comes upon a prepared vessel. When God calls you, he files you before anointing you. Most people want the anointing to come upon the unrefined version of them. While you wait for power, make sure you tarry in Jerusalem praying. While you wait for power, make sure you are not idle. Keep working on your leadership skills. While you wait for the anointing, keep working on your human relation skills. While you wait for the anointing, keep working to understand the dynamics of ministry. While you wait for the anointing, keep studying to be an excellent preacher. While you wait for the anointing, you want to become a leader by excellence, you want to become an educator, you want to become a business person. While you wait for the anointing, don't sit down and fold your arms. Wake up in the night, buy the books, go online, don't watch nonsense, go online, find valuable materials that relate to your destiny. All those exercises, are you preparing for the ministry of the rewarder? But I can tell you, the rewarder will always come. That's why you find out that ordinary men get to seasons where it looks like God just gives them visibility. And then we erroneously say they came from nowhere. There is nobody who comes out from nowhere. No. Hallelujah. Today I look at what God has graciously done in my life. 
and I'm truly humbled. My prayer is that God will use my life to inspire a generation more than just planting pride to help people know that spending time to market yourself is a total waste of time. Your marketing is to build your value. I'm saying this because something is going to come on someone shortly. I'm going to pray some prayers for you and for your destiny. There are doors. Remember, we're dealing with opening of doors. He said the gift of a man makes room for him. So when it's time for God to end the cycle of poverty in your family, it's not just the Esther anointing is going to drop. Before the Esther anointing arrives, listen carefully. He will now isolate at least one person who begins to get angry with that situation and say, Lord, things cannot continue like this. We can't continue living from hand to mouth. Our daughters and our sons will not keep prostituting themselves because they are looking for money. Lord, I will learn God's way of doing this. And God will plant a passion in that person. And he will begin to listen to tapes and teachings. The rewarder is watching. Remember, the more he's building himself, the more she's building herself, enduring the temptation for all kinds of compromises, preparing yourself for a great life. And after 10 years, the person will be running an organization that is multi-billion and people will say i used to know you you are right but not that version anymore not that version anymore not that version anymore can i tell you when it has to do with refining your potentials so that you schedule the seasons of reward don't spare yourself don't let your tears. We live in a generation that is excessively obsessed with comfort. We love comfort too much. Listen, comfort is when you have arrived, not when you are starting. A young man is about to start life and he wants a comfort of a veteran. He sits down with a 50, 60, 70 year old man and he wants the same kind of treatment. No, sir. Apostle, I got a job. They are just giving me 50,000 and I have to trek for 30 minutes. Go and ask parents who trek from one community to one community to go to a, a secondary school. For the man to become the professor that you see that he is today, he had to trek and with joy. It was even an honor for him that he could go to school. But our generation today, there are people who can have access. You can just walk 10 minutes, 20 minutes to a church. And you will sit down and follow online because of sheer laziness and then want a, a, a solid impartation to come upon you and then God will trust you with the destinies of men globally it doesn't work that way hallelujah my dear people are here sometimes I go online and I listen to their songs when I listen to their songs I call them and I say this thing you sang congratulations from a spiritual standpoint I was touched but from a technical standpoint, this and this and this is a mistake. Go and do it again. Go back to the studio. Walk again. Don't say, I don't have money. The money you got as honorarium is not for buying clothes. Go and invest in your mind. The one for clothes will come. Go and invest in your mind. Can I tell you, there are many of you right now, what you have around you is what has made your head empty. Because the money God gave you was supposed to be for your head. You denied your head of an opportunity to be rich in knowledge. And you kept creating a semblance of success whereas there was nothing there. It is better for people to know you have nothing physically. But that they can appreciate the investment of God's grace. How long did it take Pharaoh to decorate Joseph? They didn't decorate his mind. Decorating your body can happen in one day. I know the cloth does not look very nice, but you just invest in your spirit and your mind. The day the person sends to appreciate your value comes by God. That person can take you shopping in one day and buy your whole destiny for you. Are we together? I love that song. Prepare to sing it for me. Come, K strings. Okay. You just sing it one time for me. He wrote the song. I want you to just sing that song. It, said, it means fix me. We're stepping into a prophetic dimension in this teaching now. There are some of you, there are things you need to throw away. 
throw away and make up your mind. Sing for me, K strings. says fix me is a cry walk on me what does it take for my glory to rise fix me if it takes fasting fix it oh God if it takes prayer fix it oh God if it takes me going for trainings fix it oh God if it takes another level of education and knowledge fix me oh God but by all means, by all means, I refuse to remain ordinary. By all means, I refuse to remain a mediocre. By all means. Hallelujah. Hear me. Listen to me. The season of training is a very hard season. You see some of my photos of many years, as wonderful as those photos are, you see some of us looking lean. We look better than those days now, but those are the days that made these days. Hallelujah. Emptying yourself in prayer emptying yourself in fasting raising the bar of your fire and your passion even when you are doing well you increase the bar of the marking script as if you are not doing anything hear me my dear generation hear me don't settle for less don't settle too cheap there are heights and the journey is far remember my teaching last week i challenge you on this wise and i'm still repeating it again when it's time to announce the U.S. conference, I will tell you a very serious miracle that God did. It is, there are things that when God does, it just keeps you in awe. Hallelujah. Let me tell you sincerely, sincerely, and I'm saying this openly. There is no one pound 
one euro that has been sent already for this conference every money that has been used to do everything so far has been the lavish giving of god's people with joy in their hearts in spite of the limitation we don't have an account provided yet and people have squeezed in to say i can't wait when when you stay and it builds you don't worry about supplies don't worry about a name don't worry about where you will get the donkey for the triumphant entry just make sure that your your gift and your talent is developed in one day god can open up a door someone can come and sing one song and the whole nation will place a demand on you in one day god can put you somewhere as a politician and as a businessman a dear woman i can't remember her name now i met her when i went to preach for my dear friend pastor kingsley in lagos and i meet this woman and she starts to tell me her story very touching story it's possible she's even watching or may get to hear this and what took her to the white house was moi moi making moi moi that's what scaled her till she got to the white house until today she's still doing it she shared with me her story and i was so touched i remember discussing with pastor kingsley's wife i said you will have to do a documentary for this woman incredible anything can lift you if you refine it admiring people and wishing if i were more beautiful god knows if since you are not esther be something else you are not esther be deborah at least be something wishing you were esther is a waste of time if you cannot be the queen that king ahasuerus will marry then be deborah the warrior then be naomi then be this if you cannot be gideon be elijah if you cannot be elijah be samuel since you cannot fight learn how to prophesy but by all means make sure you do something can i tell you what god has put in your hand is enough to open the gates of your destiny listen to me thank god for those who have what you do not have but stop this season of blind admiration that makes you to demean what you have everybody can celebrate what you carry you just have not recognized it and refined it anything in its crude fashion is not worthy of being rewarded i know you are a great musician thank god for um david dam and sam and k strings and all these my precious people thank god for their lives but do you know that what god has put in you someday you can stand and share the stage and also celebrate jesus but it's good to be challenged by other people's giftings but please not at the detriment of what god gave you thank god for apostle joshua selman but what you are seeing is a refined version of something you may even have a greater version of anything looks bad when it is not refined including oil Go and ask those who work in the oil and gas sector when you see oil in its raw and crude state the smell alone will drive you away you almost want to suffocate yet that's what cars will queue for for hours and say thank you for paying can i tell you this god has already scheduled your destiny helper i have taught you your destiny helper kept visiting you but he found you in jealousy and anger not working on yourself and they were authorized to go back i hope this year they will not come again and still find you who is still giving excuses and blaming demons and saying it's because my father was a drunkard that may not be the best but now that you know he's like that what do you have to do yes ago i read a story and i've shared it many times while we're in zaria a man who raised two children was not a very responsible man unfortunately and he raised two children one would later become uh, a very bad person a nuisance to society and the other would grow to be some sort of businessman very responsible man and one time they had the opportunity to interview both of them and they asked the bad angry person why are you like that and he says what do you expect with the kind of father i had 
That was his excuse. Why are you bad and bringing trouble to society? He said, what do you expect with the kind of father I had? They now ask his successful brother, why are you like this? And said, he's also answered the same way. What do you expect with the kind of father I had? For one person, his father's negative situation was a challenge that made him say, if I came from a poor family, a poor family would not come out of me. It was a determination. For another person, he kept blaming. Some of you today will never rise because you are blaming everybody in your life. They didn't help me. I have an uncle somewhere. I even saw him the other day buying cars for his children and not for me. That is a, a mediocre excuse. Repent today and get back to work. Hold on the steering of your destiny with the determination of one who is working with God and begin to drive your life to a place of purpose. It is not because you came from a bad family. I don't downplay the pain that you came from, but or, or you or you passed through. Let me tell you, there are many people who went through ten times worse an experience than you, and they have been able to reinvent themselves and to rise. Hallelujah. Many years ago, there used to be someone in Joss. I think he won one of these prizes for marathon years ago and we had the opportunity to meet him we were introduced to the man he used to climb a mountain with stones stones in a bag like rock stones you put it in a bag and be hiking up a mountain that was the way he trained himself for that kind of thing now he came from a village very poor village but then most people would see him in glory and not know that that was the price can i tell you do not be ashamed of your tears when you know that you are in a season of training don't pamper yourself if you must trek trek with honor if you must do zero zero one your meal do it with honor so that your children can do one 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 are we together apostle i don't have the opportunity to go to a very good school i'm now sending my children to some maybe some institution that i'm paying next to nothing they are not teaching them very much let the children make good use of that opportunity is better than nothing tomorrow god will supplement it there are people like us that god is raising as midwives i have a very powerful teaching here about the mystery of midwives we'll discuss mephibosheth and the mistakes of midwives that midwives can destroy destinies a man's destiny was crippled because of the carelessness of a midwife a midwife is not just a medical practitioner anybody who helps people transit from where they are to where they need to be is a midwife and you can produce mephibosheth if you do not know how to raise men that's a teaser for that series be around on that day that day will be like the coming of Christ. I will not tell you. Just be ready. Hallelujah. How many of you here as worship ministers listening to me can truly say I am working on myself to a point where even if 10 million naira is given to me, it will not look like it is too much a reward. Do you know, I'm saying this with all humility. I remember days when I started preaching, I would go to preach doing my best and once I'm done preaching, you see the people discussing, they are obviously discussing what to do with me. And they will just put maybe rice in a pack away. And once they put it, they will just add, open a, a notebook and tear out a little sheet and just fold 100, 100 naira, maybe 1,000 and just say, man of God, you know that uh, may God bless you. And they will wait till I climb the bike to return me home first. Then they'll just smuggle it like bribery in my pocket. But I'll take it with joy. That was not my motive. But I knew that days will come when God will, his justice system will not allow that kind of thing to happen again. I didn't need, I have never, and I will never in my life tell anybody, give me this amount, give me this honor. No, never, never. The covenant of my call and my service prohibits that. I love him and I serve him truly. I would rather even sow into the lives of the people and bless them. Hallelujah. Sacrifice. I remember one time, I think I had preached in, uh, that was, um, I think somewhere in Ondo State. And we're done and we're, no, was it, that was Funabo, so I can't remember. And I was to return to have a meeting in Joss and it was by road. 
Ladies and gentlemen, look, let me tell you. When you go through the seasons of training, don't worry. Go through it with pain, but with gallancy and honor. Knowing that there is a compensation system waiting for you. While you are rehearsing, my dear instrumentalist, don't, don't pamper yourself. Rehearse for hours. Learn the songs. Fast and pray. Receive songs from heaven. Okay, the first one that God used you to bring, it didn't seem to be appreciated. No problem. Go back again. One night you will catch a fish that your net will be sinking and your boat will be breaking. Your, your, your net will be breaking and your boat will be sinking. As a preacher, keep being diligent. Pray and prepare. Fan yourself to flames. Don't try to expose yourself and say, No, me, I'm here. Mm -mm. Neither do men light a lamp. You just keep adding fire. A day will come when it's time for God to announce you. He will put all your destiny helpers in front of you. And then somebody will passively say, help us and round up this service with one last prayer. Five minutes prayer, let us pray. God will sign on your tongue and sign on your voice in a way that someone will come and meet you and say, we have a little conference. The speaker is not coming again. Can you come and help us? Don't take it as an insult. Go. And God will announce you until one day you stand on stage with the people you once admired and they will call you blessed. Businessman, don't try to act like you're a billionaire. Well, act in your mind, but not by faking your life. You're not there, you're not there. Diligence will make you go there. A day will come, the people you are begging today to be an honor for you to sit at the same table, to, for them to sit with you. And they will share as colleagues, but until then, refine yourself i'm speaking to someone prophetically refine yourself half baked you will not rise to certain heights not by sentiments and not by anything apostle kings are not making a demand on me i'm a i'm a, a chef or i cook you cook as good as what can we ask you to come and cook for kings and be sure you will not disappoint them you know i've taught you when it has to do with the issue of value don't stop until the person you are serving is the king once you have not gotten into the palace don't stop you go to my house right now god is my witness you on my laptop there are videos i'm watching there are there are things i'm writing for my own personal growth as soon as i'm done finished with ministry activity i go back it's not an excuse to say I'm going to jump and sleep. I have daily routines that I must cover by covenant. Doesn't matter whether I'm tired or not. As I travel, they go with me. I finish preaching and while people are saying I was in the meeting, keep shouting under the anointing while I keep building myself. Lord, your boy is here again. Let's continue the training from where we stop. Your word tonight should be that song you heard. Fix me. Take away pride fix me take away complacency fix me take away flimsy excuses i know that nigeria is not in the best of state but there are people who it, even if jesus was the person in aso rock they will still suffer because their problem is in i'm, I, I'm not saying that in a, in a derogatory way forgive me but that they, they would still go through a a, a, a hard life because intrinsically it's just easy to blame people and things. You are ready to rise when you can take responsibility and say, I've been a careless father. Nigeria is not the reason why my children are not in school. I have not gotten up to take responsibility. Lord, I have failed in my responsibility as a father. And I apologize to my wife and my children. I grew up from a background where I did not know much. Lord, I am ready to learn. My children will never be thrown out of school again. I don't know what to do, but I know that I'm not going back again. And the spirit of wisdom will take it from there. The first video you will watch, you will find my video on productivity. And fire comes from that video to now stabilize you first. Then you start following the mysteries of the kingdom. And in one year, it will look like a mistake. You would have come out of that and you will build a scholarship fund after your pain to now help other children. 
apostle we 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 come from a very terrible family that's why we're all struggling eight of us in one room for as long as you keep blaming someone that has died and gone for the reason why you are where you are there is no rising for you in my world there are no excuses I take responsibility for anything and everything that does not work and I get to work about it that's the mindset of a champion stop pointing hands at people and lay your hands on the floor and say Lord grant me grace there is a reason why my ministry is not growing father I, I love you with integrity of heart but what am I missing and the Lord will say go and listen to apostles message the work of the ministry and you go and get that teaching and camp with it a message of one or two hours you will use four days to listen because you will keep pausing and praying pausing and praying finally you will find a few secrets and from there you will rise you must damage ignorance from your life fight it like you're fighting the devil mama don't say i am too old there's nothing i can do if there is nothing you can do you can pray if there is nothing you can do you can advise if there is nothing you can do you can call your sons and daughters and say i may not have made the most out of my life but my dear children in my lifetime i want you to rise up and surpass me i want to watch with my eyes your victory let it be a consolation to the things i could not do can i tell you anybody who goes through the same pain you went through that went before you um you have not blessed them if you go through poverty make sure you are the last if you go through spiritual bankruptcy make sure you are the last if you made mistakes with your life and all kinds of things happen make sure you are the last you conquer any situation in life when you bring victory lessons out of it that can help other people hallelujah when we started what we were doing people hardly believed in what we were doing people made all kinds of statements and made it look like and I made up my mind from that experience that as much as God grants me grace I will invest in younger ministers that are coming correct them when they are wrong but encourage them hold their hands whether groups as individuals to help them if they are stubborn and they don't choose to rise no problem that's a different thing but for as many people who are determined to rise I can tell you for as long as I'm alive, we'll use the influence, the resources, the rod of correction all together to help them rise well. Hallelujah. I made up my mind that I was not going to be poor. The devil had that confession. He thought I was joking. Ask him now. I made up my mind that nobody would cut short my life before my time. It looked like an arrogant statement. I watch many sincere people die by my left and my right. I sympathize with so many of them. But I'm happy that they, most of them have gone to be with the Lord. But I said, as for me, the fullness of my days I will fulfill. It is still my confession. I made up my mind that I will never raise a people who are just spiritual and bankrupt of influence. I knew that just speaking like that would not be the solution. I went to find out from those who have the proven track records those who brought kings the first lesson i learned was that anytime you speak you must find a scripture that supports what you are saying and i went to genesis chapter 17 and verse 6 that's where i got my leadership principle and i will make thee exceeding fruitful and i will make nations of thee and kings shall come out of you it was an anchor scripture that i held i said lord i will never raise a small people it doesn't matter what I will never raise a small people but the secret is the ministry of the spirit and the word of the spirit remember it is the mystery of the ten virgins it is not always about sin and righteousness you can be righteous and still fail the Bible there showed that it is about sin and righteousness and then foolishness and wisdom you can be righteous and foolish like the five virgins you will still fail so once you deal with the issue of sin and righteousness that is the first step you must now start giving yourself a superior orientation to damage and erode foolishness from your life the parable of the ten virgins was not about sinners they were all virgins all of them had the lamp which is the word of god but what they had was insufficiency of their relationship with the holy spirit it took the lamp 
and the oil for lights to come. You can have the lamp and not have the oil. Fix me. Fix me. Fix the issue of pride. Fix the issue of laziness. Fix the issue of giving excuses, oh God. It is time for my destiny to rise. You are the rewarder of them that diligently seek you. He said, let us not be weary in well-doing, for we will reap in due season if we faint not. Lord, this is not the best of me. As a man of God, thank you for your help upon my life, but I take responsibility. The nations are not placing a demand upon my life because there is a level of ascendance in the spirit that I need to rise to, that probably through carelessness or complacency or an early arrival, mentality have not risen but by this message I take advantage and I begin to press there is a reward not for this version of you a higher version of you man of God the day God uses you to raise the dead that day you will not ask for partners again people will call you even while you are sleeping and say please send us your account number we want to give you a billion naira and you tell them till tomorrow and they will call you by 6 a.m. and say I'm still waiting suffering is not generic your value or the absence of it is what defines your possibilities please try to believe what I'm telling you many years ago when I drove into this city there was a particular park not too far from here that I would go and stop. I would land there and then go to a restaurant that was close by there and eat before I now start exploring all the things that brought me. And I did that with joy because I knew that one day would be a, a story. Let me tell you something that happened. When we were graduating the School of Ministry students, the last set, so I needed to have a snapshot with them. And then they drove me round to come in and I passed that area and I just looked and I nodded my head. I remembered the features there and I said, goodness, this life, somebody you need to pray, fix me. So that your tomorrow will not be angry that you wasted your today. Let the 10 year old version of you, look at me. I taught something years ago in Zaria and I told them, I said, the 10 year version of you, 10 years before now, if he looks at you now, will he say this was the person I wanted to become? Or will he say you wasted the gift of time? Don't let the, ten, the next 10 years of your life look like the same because you keep giving excuses. My voice is not very nice. That's why I'm not singing well. You are unserious. Then write a good song and let those with good voices sing and give credit to you. I didn't have time to prepare my sermon for the teachings because I, I teach on Sunday and I teach midweek service. You know it's not easy. Respectfully speaking, flimsy excuse. Go and find out those who preach five to ten sermons in a week. And they have been doing that for many, 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 many years. I'm lazy spiritually now because I have children. No. 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 I'm not a giver now because times are hard. I used to go and buy books and invest in myself. But now I don't do so much. No. God is speaking to you because we are going to pray. And there is a grace that I pray to God for that will come upon you. Honestly speaking. The gift of a man. When God taught me this, it changed my life. I made up my mind that I will love God with all my heart. But my generation will never look at me as a non-entity. It's not pride. It's the truth. The secret is this. I found your word and I did eat it. I made up my mind that there is nowhere across this globe. I will not enter any circle where I will be intimidated. I can be challenged for good. I can be provoked onto a greater sense but not that I get somewhere and look at myself and feel miserable no I told myself that that dimension of shame I will end it forever
There are places I enter today, there are people I meet today that I consider it an honorable privilege to sit with them, shake hands with them, talk with them, kings, presidents of nations. I don't take it for granted. But can I tell you, it is not as a valueless person that I sit there. It is not as a necessary luggage I'm carried there. It's with honor and gallancy to also contribute to their lives. This is what God is training you to become. So that you are like a battle axe. Whether you stand before kings and presidents and nobles, you will honor them as touching what they represent, but not to the detriment of your value. Hallelujah. If I may not have the kind of intellectual soundness you want, there is an anointing that can do something in your life. If I may not have the vocal skills that you want, I can pray and I have a covenant with God and he will come on your behalf. My question for you as we prepare to pray is what is that rod in your hand? There is a rod you have neglected while admiring others. There is an anointing that has been hovering around your destiny, waiting for your value, waiting for you to build yourself. Listen to me. The reward system in this kingdom answers to value. You are a doctor, rise to a level where you become an exceptional one and trust the God who announces men to announce you. You are a preacher, not for the sake of competition, but ladies and gentlemen, make a covenant with yourself and your destiny that no man will give you access to his pulpit. And while you stand and you are preaching, they are discussing among themselves. Let this be the last time this man returns here because he ended up wasting our time, wasting the time of our partners, wasting the time of all those who love this ministry. No, no excuses, no excuses, no excuses, no excuses, no excuses. No excuses train yourself build yourself cry but train yourself cry but pray cry but go for trainings some of you after tonight you should go online and look for programs that you can do even if it's two week one month two month programs that can help to file your understanding or informally educate yourself there are materials online everything you are looking for you can find if you search with patience and with humility and determination let those who have results speak to you and mentor you and help you and build you. Hallelujah. Make up your mind that God will be able to trust you with the nations and you will not be a disappointment because of the excellency of your preparedness. Let me stop here. The reward system of the kingdom therefore is based on God's ability to anoint your value. Listen carefully, to anoint your value. Not just to anoint you, to anoint your value, to anoint your skill, to anoint your ability. Ability that is developed, ability that is refined, ability that is ready to be deployed. Then the anointing comes upon it. The union between the anointing, the engracing, the favor of the spirit and value that is refined is what schedules seasons of reward in this kingdom. Let me repeat for one last time, then we begin to pray. The union between the supernatural anointing of the Holy Spirit coming upon your value, your skill, your ability, your gifting that has been discovered developed and refined with pain, patience, sacrifice. That is what schedules seasons of rewards. Are you a footballer? Huh? You are a footballer. Come. And we will never settle for less. We know there's more that's found in you. You are a footballer. You play football professionally. How long have you been in it? Huh? I, find, I find it hard when it is always time to my bedroom to play. Like now, I'm supposed to play for Oya Sports. When I went there, I can't even play the ball. No, listen, this is what I'm saying. 
your gift you have done your own work but there's no anointing on it you see it is not skill alone this is where the pride of the secular world comes as powerful as your skill is minus the anointing the devil can rubbish you in one moment that's why i told you there is a grace that is coming because some of you in truth you have done your homework god brought you to church because the missing component that grace that must come upon the oil wants to multiply but the vessel is small now that you have taken time to expand the vessel the oil wants to multiply to fill up every vessel can i pray for you my friend i'll pray for you father in the name of jesus i pray for this our dear one you are not ashamed you came to church and held a football in your hand that is a level of conviction and passion you are not ashamed of it i stretch my hands towards you and i pray in the name of jesus the anointing that lifts men that comes upon their gifts may that grace rest upon you may that grace rest upon you may that grace rest upon you i impart that anointing upon you and in the name of jesus i open the two lift gate for you i release you go and flourish go and prosper in the name of jesus that's how it works your skill and your gift listen carefully now watch this my friend the day you will come to stand here remind everybody of this thing that happened go watch this while jesus was struggling to learn the holy ghost acted as if he did not see him till after 30 years when jesus was prepared he now came to john in the wilderness right john baptizes jesus then the heavens are opened and the holy ghost now comes you would think that he did not see jesus some of you here are yet to work on yourself there is no need doing any impartation because the truth is that it's going to be a waste the only impartation you need is grace and the stamina the staying power the resilience to keep pushing whether in ministry business professional life and pursuit but there are others in all honesty scattered across this crowd following online you are saying apostle i don't mean to be arrogant but i sincerely can admit to you that god has helped me i have done my homework in ministry i have done my homework in business it is for such i want to welcome you by this impartation you are about to receive now you saw what happened to our dear footballer gentleman there is an anointing believe me that can come upon men we don't just walk by skill alone that is why i told you the reward system of the kingdom is the union i will emphasize again between value refined value that is prepared to be deployed and then the engracing of the spirit when these two combine together there is no limit to how far a man can go it would be stupid and arrogant for many 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 years before now to imagine that we'll be influencing people across the globe to go from one nation to the other and keep that nation at a standstill it was a phenomenal meeting that we had in kenya last last year i think it was within a span of one to two months the planning no publicity material that i'm, I'm aware billboards and the rest none Sixty-five thousand people phenomenal meeting by the spirit the fathers of the land there told me according to them that the last time a meeting like this happened was when maurice sorulo came and the spiritual father of the man who hosted me we were there with him and he was telling me because he was maurice sorulo's interpreter and the fathers were broken and humbled and said we see the fire of revival returning to kenya again it does not happen by luck I don't know what height you want God to take you in to but in the next two minutes for the sake of time please no distraction I want you to cry out your destiny before your maker 
in the name of Jesus present that rod in your hand to God go ahead is it your music ministry is it your business what is the rod you want God to anoint tonight that with it you will use to schedule a season of financial rewards rewards in terms of influence and visibility cry before God Lord, I may not have much, but here is my heart, my mind, my everything. Take it, it's yours alone. Go ahead and pray. Lord, I hand over this prophetic ministry. I may not have much, but this is the grace you have given me. Lord, you have given me extraordinary intelligence. Lord, you have given me beauty and physical appearance. Lord, you have given me nobility of stature like Saul. Someone pray. Lord, you have given me the teaching ability. You have made me a phenomenal teacher. You have made me an artist, a sportsman, a career person. Come on, someone lift up your voice and pray. I hand it over to you that rod you have given me you've given me the grace for entrepreneurship my passion cannot be wasted you've given me a heart for children you've called me into the healing ministry you've called me into the prophetic ministry Someone pray, someone pray, someone pray. Your value, the reward system of the kingdom works with your value, your skill, your ability. Obtain grace to refine it. Obtain grace to discover. Obtain grace to refine. The nations are waiting to be used by God to reward you. Ali Ali yo Ali yo Ali yo Ali Ali yo Oh oh Ali Ali yo Ali yo Ali Ali yo Mantles are falling here tonight Anointings are falling here tonight are falling here tonight for the kings to arise for the kings to be born for the kings to arise for revival to be born Someone pray. Father, it's time for the nations to drink of the grace you have placed upon my life. It's time for the nations to partake of my business acumen, of the prophetic grace, of the ministerial grace, the teaching mantle. I am victorious I have overcome I am victorious I have overcome I am victorious I 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please hear me. I'm about to pray now. Listen carefully. When I was teaching you on finances, and we have another series that I want you to really pay attention to when it's time, I taught you that our rewards in life, as I have learned, will always be in exact ratio to three things number one the need or the demand for what you do number two your ability or proficiency in doing what you do and number three the difficulty in replacing you in business we call it the law of compensation this is what guides the reward system that every time you become so valuable that kings can look for you, nobles can look for you, nations can look for you, placing a demand upon the grace of God in, on your life, whether in with respect to business endeavors or your professional life or ministry. Make up your mind to not be a mediocre. Go back home after this sermon and don't just rejoice that you came to church and heard a powerful sermon. Go back and discipline yourself prune out every kind of laziness and laxity from your life and obtain grace and be determined tonight under God that you will not rest until your value gets to the throne serving kings and nobles Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6 for without faith it is impossible to please him the Bible says for he that cometh to God must come believing that he exists and then that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him god rewards we serve him because we love him and forever this will be the highest motivation our love for jesus our desire to see his glory revealed and the privilege he's given us to be a blessing to the nations but in addition to that do not think it evil to position yourself to live a rewarded life. Financial reward, psychological rewards like honor, prestige, influence. These are all rewards. Rewards are not just money. Money is only one of the many channels. Influence. When people give you the gift of trust, loyalty, the capacity to influence them by reason of the effective deployment that's what Miles Munro taught me. That leadership is not about leading people. Leadership is about excelling in your gift. Serving people with your gift with such excellence that you get a reward of loyalty back from the people by reason of the effective deployment of your gift. Not lording over people. Leadership is about serving people with your gift. Your service becomes so exceptional that you receive as a reward the gift of loyalty. I'm about to pray for you. We are not inventors of this grace. We are only recipients, graceful recipients of this grace. To someone here tonight who has labored in the spirit, fasting in silence, to someone here who has labored in the spirit, praying and traveling, turning days to weeks and weeks to months and months to years for someone here who has served served from church to church from man of god to man of god serving graces and may have never been rewarded physically for someone here you have spent time to educate your mind in training consultations paid the price to go within and outside this nation to build intellectual capacity to someone here you have submitted yourself methodically to mentorship 
you have done your due diligence for someone you have taken extra courses you have stretched yourself to the border now you are the corridors of influence it's time for this grace to come upon you let me speak upon your life father in the name of jesus you have anointed me to be an extension of your possibilities to your people i stretch my hand so god as you have led me to teach your people tonight they have learned the principles that control the reward system of the kingdom many have invested in their gifts their potentials their abilities they've paid the price to laboriously refine themselves and in truth they are in a position right now where they can serve regions and nations therefore i stretch my hands as many who are in that position let the anointing that was designed to connect with your gift at the count of three marques koteba one get ready two my goodness three take that anointing now take that anointing now take that anointing now take that anointing by the power of the holy ghost receive that engracing that comes upon your gift receive that engracing upon your teaching ministry upon your business upon your professional life upon whatever it is that you do receive it in the name of jesus i decree and declare by this anointing find visibility by this anointing, find visibility. I connect you, Shabeka Toskatia. By the mystery of this anointing, connect to your financial helpers. By this anointing, connect to your endorsers. Hear me? Everybody who has the leverage of credibility, that can lift you and announce you whether in ministry in business in career i stretch my hands this week connect with them by faith for a man of god may god bring you an invitation that opens up the next season of your ministry for someone may god bring a sponsor that will overwrite your budget and give you the concentration to work. For a professional here, in the name of Jesus, I program institutions to call for your, your value, not just individuals. I'm saying it prophet, uh, prophetically. I call for institutions, not just individuals, to place value on what you carry. Hear me, there are people who here who are ready and are prepared, but the negative speakings of others is what has stopped your helpers from coming. Every wrong statement that has been said about you that is stopping your helpers and those who can be used by God to reward you from reaching you, I cancel that statement now. By this prophetic decree and this impartation, every dead vision, dead business, dead ministry, dead destiny, hear the word of the Lord, jack back to life now. A gentleman invented a drone I think he should be he'll be somewhere here in the congregation and he built he built all kinds of electronic gadgets and he built something so phenomenal I remember when he came and showed me I looked at it and I said this is this is incredible and I prayed a simple prayer for him may God connect you to people who have the interest and the resources to invest in your vision and your value and the rest is history how God just opened the door and connected him to one person willing to invest millions of dollars into that project. It is not difficult, not when the prophetic directs them. I declare again by prophecy, 
anybody who needs to be directed to your path to invest in your dream invest in your church invest in your vision invest in the quality of your life for the sake of your assignment and your mandate i declare by prophecy may they be directed so i also release upon you the grace for non-stop continuous development non-stop pursuit of god non-stop pursuit of capacity building both in the spirit and intellectually and in the name of jesus that local champion mentality that mentality of endorsing yourself among mediocres by the privilege of god's grace and for the sake of the greater that he's bringing to your life get out of that mentality now The spirit of unhealthy comparison, wrong sense of competition that drives people into early arrival mentality or frustrates them and deflates their passion to go forward. I declare that that wrong mentality leaves your mind now. <laughs> Hear me. I challenge you, some of you, when you go back home, sit down as husband and wife, sit down as father and daughter sit down as mother and son or daughter and discuss this teaching take it as a challenge and start doing something no matter how you fall and fly under the anointing it will be a total waste if you don't take responsibility and sit down for some of you as you return back home is to have a little nap eat refresh rest and get up and start writing covenant daily tasks that improve yourself i must watch two videos as touching this my music ability or this my my uh, tailoring I'm tired of sewing clothes for mediocres who will keep owing me and insult me I, I need to serve those who have them um, the, who don't ask how much again and I must work on myself go for training build yourself while praying in tongues Lord I received an anointing I will not waste this investment you keep expanding yourself that's what you need to do you are a man of God, trust God for grace. Listen carefully, go online, study, build yourself. Not from a competitive standpoint. Don't run around looking for open doors. Just relax and build yourself in fastings, in prayer. Build capacity in the spirit. God has given you the healing ministry. Don't let people doubt your call. The Bible says to, to give all diligence to these things to make your calling and your election sure. And for those of you who are outside of this nation, make sure you maximize our coming to your regions. It's an opportunity by God to connect and to receive. Have you been blessed tonight? Wave your hands to Jesus and give him praise for the word, the reward system of the kingdom. Let me make an altar call right now very quickly. And then I speak prophetically to your life finally to wrap up the service. But it is my prayer that from Sunday, will begin to hear people come and testify here that they'll say their lives just changed like light and day by reason of this mystery you have accessed you are here and you are saying apostle i need jesus i need to rededicate my heart to jesus or i am making this decision for the first time please make sure that you are not confused with the rush i know that people are you know moving up and down let's minimize movement so that we respect the altar call for the sake of one person here who heard the word and whilst you were listening jesus was speaking to you and saying when the altar call is made rush out here to make it right with jesus whether you are making this decision the first time or you are rededicating your heart to jesus it is never too late to make it right with him i'm counting one to five for the sake of time very quickly boldly leave your seat leave wherever you are and i want you to come and stand here i begin my counting now one come 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 be it unto me according to your word according to your promises i can stand secured keep coming will you carve upon my heart the truth that sets me free according to your word oh lord 
be it unto me. Come. Come. God bless you. Let's celebrate them. Still a few more people boldly coming to Jesus. He's able to save even unto the uttermost. He can give you a new beginning. He can make all things new for you. This is why he brought you to church. If you're coming from outside, please join them very quickly. And those who are following online and by way of the internet, here's your chance to make Jesus Lord of your life. Distance is no barrier. Connect by faith. And in doing so, believe that he's giving you a new beginning. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for coming. You have responded to the cry of the Spirit. You're joining them. Please come very quickly. I'm about to lead them to pray. Thank you. Thank you. It always starts with Jesus. Always starts with Jesus. He's the foundation, the cornerstone, the bedrock. Lift your right hand high above your head, if you will, as a sign of total surrender to Jesus. And then I want you to say this after me as loud and as clear as you can. Say, Lord Jesus. Go ahead. Say, Lord Jesus. Tonight, I have heard your word. I believe that you died for me. I believe that you rose again for my justification right now. I receive Jesus into my heart as my Savior, my Lord, and my King. I declare that the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over my life. From tonight and forever, I am a child of God. What's that? Can you imagine? Hold these people. Ah. I command every foul spirit out of her right now. Out now! I curse that spirit. In the name of Jesus. Let me pray for the people. Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, My son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us. Thank you.